Hello, hello, happy Monday. I hope you are all doing well. Let's see if I can find myself. Because <clears throat> it is not showing that I'm live. <laughs> all right, let's see. Oh, there we go, there we go. All right. All right, I'm gonna fix my camera, so close your eyes really quick. I think I have adjusted it to where it needs to be, but um, I need to get it straight now. All right, sorry guys. When I messed with it last week, or a couple weeks ago when I hit it and knocked it all down, <laughs> I have no idea what I did. Um, but it's still crooked. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. I don't know. I have no idea. I give up. These stupid little holders, they never work right. <laughs> um, I guess I could like adjust my table. Um, let's see if I can make it work. And yeah, that probably makes it worse, but let's see. Um, anyway, okay, we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna leave it at that. Um, hey, 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 everyone. Welcome. Happy Monday. For those of you who don't know, I am Amy Rogers, and I am the person behind Simply Elizabeth Crafts. So, Elizabeth is my middle name. For those of you, you can call me that as well. I know a lot of people do, so have at that. Um, and today, I'm super excited. We are going to be using the Happy Hedgehogs Bundle. I was definitely very intimidated by this bundle, very intimidated. I don't know why, <laughs> um, maybe because I've never worked with a hedgehog stamp, but I searched a lot for hedgehog home decor, and I was quite shocked at how many, um, how much decor there was for that. So that's kind of where I got some of my ideas from for today. So I'm super excited to share all of those with you but let's start first with our prize winners so we've got Angie Brewer and we've got Florence Miller and I have both of y'all's addresses so I will put those in the mail to you tomorrow um, I got a whole bunch of stuff for mailing ready over the weekend and realized that today was a holiday <laughs> so um, nothing will be picked up until Tomorrow, but that's okay. At least it's all done and off my desk, right? All right, I'm sharing this over to my group and I will move these. Um, our prizes for next week, let me grab those. Oh, wait. I have to stretch for them. Is a pack of the New Horizon paper. This is gorgeous paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then the other is catch you later. So make sure that you share the video and make a comment. And then I will draw a name and pick a winner for next week. All right. Let's see if I can get my stuff straightened out over there again. Okay, so those are the two prizes for next week. So we'll set those aside. Couple of things I want to show you. Um, I did a card swap for the new set, the all together. It's the one with the hands, and then it comes with all the the new uh, skin tone blends. Oh yeah, Sharon, the monkeys are really cute. <laughs> um, I did a card swap, and so I did it with a couple of other demonstrators, and I just wanted to show you those cards really quick. This one was mine. The pinkies together reminded me of when I was a kid and we used to do like the I promise and there was like a whole little handshake with it. So that's where I decided to go with that. Um, and then you've got this one. This is that paper that coordinates with it all, which is obviously black and white and gorgeous. And then you've got this one. I didn't take them out of the... Uh, pack it so I hope they're not too shiny because I would get them all messed up and then I love the pink and the the black this is the paper and then the the lady who did this one Jan Bassett 
she actually took and colored the white lines with it. So there's that one. And then this one. I love the black and the red together. And of course, my favorite ribbon is on this one. So of course, I love it. And then there's this one. I love the, um, I guess, I don't know what you call it. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, thank you all for sharing. Um, it's the like sunburst, sunburst, that's it, technique. I love that. I've seen several cards like that recently, so I'm going to have to case it. And then you've got this one. And then this one. And they put um, actual clothes on them, which I think is such a great idea. I didn't even think about that. And then this one. So they took a lot of time to do these. So um, let's see who did this one. Stephanie Jandro. So she put a lot of effort into her swap. So kudos to her. Okay, so that is some swaps to show you. And then there are, there is one week left for February. And don't forget that when you spend $50 in my online store, you get the tutorial for free. That is my project, and it's right there. I have already designed my one for March, and it's been submitted, and I'm super excited about it as well. So, um, but there are 34 projects here. So again, $50, and you get this with the free, you get this free. If you wanted just the tutorial, you can email me, and you can purchase it for, uh-oh, um, and you can purchase it for $20. Am I freezing up? I am actually the only one home, so I have no idea why I'd be freezing. Um, cause I'm the only one on Wi-Fi right now. Um, hmm. Who else? Am I just freezing for Vicki and Sharon? You might have to log out and then come back in. Sometimes that'll help. If that doesn't work, let me know. I don't know why I would be freezing. I am for once the only one here tonight. No one else is here logged on. Oh, I am in and out. Okay. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. No freezing here. Okay. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> if I am going in and out, I'm sorry. The replay will be um, uploaded to YouTube, so you can definitely watch it completely there, and it would not, it shouldn't freeze for you there. Um, it should be good, because it saves to my phone as well, so. Um, again, one more week of February left. Can y'all believe that? It is, this month has gone by really, really fast, um, but there is only one more week to get in with joining and we would love to have you be a part of our Stampin' Grace team. We do lots of things every month. We have lots of fun. I now have a new admin who is on my Facebook page who, she is my sidekick. <laughs> she loves to post and she is doing a great job. She is keeping that up for me because I was starting to get a little overwhelmed with it, so Kathy has been stepping in for me on that. Um, but we do challenges and swaps, and we have team meeting, and we have we just have a lot of fun. So if you're interested, you get two free extra stamps right now. So for $99 plus tax, you can actually get about, I think it's about $175 if you got the two most expensive stamp sets that we sell. So it's about $175 worth of products for $99. So it's a great, great deal. Um, ask me if you have any questions. I will be happy to go over and talk about it with you. Um, the last thing I have for tonight is my monthly club. My monthly club is using the Rain Boots set. This is an absolute gorgeous set. I am in love with it. I started creating projects. I'm going to even do a Facebook Live with it because I have tons of projects to go along with this bundle. Um, but Club is $39 a month. 
club includes for this month a pack of the abstract beauty paper and it includes a whole bolt of the linen thread um, this in itself is a little over $20 because the paper is 15 so because it's got gold in it so those are the two items that you will get plus the make and take packets and these are the cards I'll just run through those really really quick um, that's one of my favorite ones and that's my other favorite one so anyway um, you can add on for this month there will be an email that will go out later this week you can add on the bundle it will be at cost so you do not um, you only pay like the actual price of the bundle I will pay the shipping and the tax for you and then you can also you'll be able to add on the basic pattern decorative or decorative mask if you wanted to because two of the projects do use that but you don't have to add that on so if you're interested the email will go out and you can register for that uh, by March the 15th and I'll be honest with you I can only do so many a month since I do work full-time and I have about three spots left this month so yay <laughs> um, it makes me very very happy but then sad at the same time that I might not be able to do all of them that I usually get so um, but okay Kathy am I still freezing for you I don't think I am for anybody else I think it's just a couple of you so um, just let me know but all right so that is it for tonight I think I'm pretty sure yep that's it so we are gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna pull in all the stuff for the first card so we're gonna do happy hedgehogs and that is gonna be our first card and we'll set all that aside we're gonna be using some of our watercolor paper and I need to pull in the punch I'm gonna tell you that these projects actually use a lot of products so I'm sorry <laughs> um, but you can find the blog post in the description of this video I did actually already update the link so you can click on the link in the video and it'll take you right to the blog post and it will give you the dimensions as well as all of the products that are used. All right. Let's see if I got it all over here. <laughs> I don't need those because I've already die cut. All right. And I'm going to need my little piece of grid paper here. Okay, so I'm going to set all that aside so I don't get it all messed up. All right, and what we're going to start with first is we're going to start with our watercolor paper because we want to make sure that it dries by the time we go to stamp our sentiment on it. So I'm using Pool Party because I just wanted to add some color to the back of our um, page there. I didn't want it to be all white. All right. So I'm going to use the, the um, I call it the fat tip brush. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to squeeze some water into the lid. And all I did to get the ink in the lid was I squeezed it together. I pushed on that top. And I do, I want it to be very, very light. So I'm okay having a lot of water. Okay. And then we're just going to brush it right on there. I am not being picky about the design of it or anything like that. I'm just going to do brush strokes straight across. I might actually need a little bit more. There we go. All right. And I got some fuzz right there, so let's get that off. Okay, I'm good with that. And then I'm just going to take and clean off my brush by squeezing some water on it. And then just running it back and forth on here until it no longer shows blue. 
All right, there we go. And just be careful when you put your tip on for the, for the larger brush because you do have to make sure that those ends are together. Otherwise you can mess up your tip. Okay, we're gonna set that aside and let that dry. And then we're gonna go ahead, cause we do have some fussy cutting, sorry. <laughs> um, we're gonna go ahead and stamp our hedgehogs. All right, so let's see. Our early espresso is stamped with the little one. This is the one we have to fussy cut, but it's not too bad. Okay, and then we're gonna stamp in soft suede our larger one. All right, then we are going to take our crumb cake Stampin' Blends and we're gonna color it in. Now, I will recommend making sure that it all dries really good before you do it, but um, I'm not gonna, it won't smear too much, but just so you know, it might smear a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that it's really dry. I'm gonna take the dark and do that in the hair area. And, and then I'm just gonna go down here on the bottom, just kind of follow that line like that. And then I'm gonna take the um, dark end and do the feet. Okay, now we're going to take the light color and we're just going to kind of blend it all on the bottom. Like this. Now the one thing I did with this one is I turned it into a girl. So to turn it into a girl, all I did was take a Poppy Parade stamp and blend, and I gave it just a little bit of lipstick right there. Cuteness. Okay, then for this one, we're gonna do the dark crumb cake again. And then we're just gonna color it in. Up and around the ear. Okay, and then we're just gonna fill it in. We're not doing any shading or anything like that as far as the hair goes. All right, and then we're just gonna go along that bottom line where the hairline is. Okay, now we're gonna take the light Oh wait, I forgot the feet. All right, here we go. The feet, the feet. And I seriously don't know if these are the actual color of the feet, but we're making it my own. <clears throat> I know, Verna, they are. They're so stinking cute, but I tell you what, I was a little nervous <laughs> when I started playing with this one because I literally sat probably at my desk for I don't know, an hour going, what in the world am I gonna do? Something that is different and not like everyone else, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so there are those. Now we're gonna use the punch and we can only punch out that one. So we're gonna stick it in here. I'm gonna line it up. down and ta-da get all my little scraps out and these little dots right here will punch out and those are for his eyes if you just did punch outs of it like out of paper and didn't actually stamp him okay this one we have to fussy cut I'm gonna bring in my scissors here and it's seriously really easy 
I'm not worrying about the hair. Okay, I'm just running along the outside. So I'm just kind of creating a bubble. And then on the really tall hairs, I am kind of going out a little bit or in a little bit just to kind of give it some little bit of a texture. And the ear. All right. And then again with the feet, I'm just gonna go around the outside. I'm obviously not gonna go in that little groove right there for that for that foot. And then we just want to cut this little piece off here. Okay, let me straighten up this little piece here by the ear and here. All right, so there is our other little hedgehog. And then we're gonna set that aside that is not quite dry, so I'm gonna grab my heat tool and I'm gonna go ahead and dry it the rest of the way. And there you saw me doing it on the back. I'm heating it up on the back and that's to help just kind of flatten that paper back out again because it does, when you heat it, it will, it all paper will warp when you add heat and water to it. So watercolor paper is definitely thicker and can handle water, but it still can warp. So that's why I did the back of it to kind of help lay it out smooth again. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment. And we're gonna do that in Early Espresso. And I'm using a different stamp set because I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really like these sentiments. <laughs> Not at all. I really don't like them. Um, finding a friend is the best discovery of all. I mean, it's fine, but it's really, I don't know. They just didn't speak to me. <laughs> yes, they are. They really are. I, I've never had any experience with um, Hedgehog's Dep, but they are really cute, and there are some really cute home decor out there with them. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I'm pulling from this, uh, for this card, I'm pulling from a different stamp set. And yes, Kathy, they are cute. They are very, very cute. Um, you need this set. Like you need a longer list, right, Kathy? Um, okay, um, I am pulling in Love You So Much from the Flowering Tulips. All right, so we're gonna stamp it at the top up here. I'm gonna make sure I've got really good ink on it. And then we're gonna stamp it right about here. So just right there in that blue. All right, and then we're gonna take my vellum, there we go, and we're gonna run vellum along the back. Maybe, there we go. And then just one kind of down in the center. We're gonna cover that up with the heart, so no worries about it. And then we're just gonna stick it right there. Okay, then we're gonna take and pop up our heart and this is just pale papaya. Oh, Deb and Berna. <laughs> I went ahead and ordered one of those Etsy things that I showed you, the organizers. I ordered that. So, Oh, really, Verna? Oh, no, that would be fun. Huh, interesting. 
I never thought about that for a kid's room, but it could be fun and cute and animal-like and could be, you know, boy or girl. That's probably a good idea. Um, so anyway, I ordered it, so I'll tell you how I like the organizer. Yes, I didn't order, obviously, the big one, just the, the little one from Etsy because it was cheaper and, you know, <laughs> I just did it as a birthday present to myself. <laughs> like I need any more, right? Okay, so we're gonna add these right here. I didn't punch it very well, but it's all right. I can fix that later. Um, and what we're gonna do is put adhesive on their front half and then put a dimensional on their back sides. So there and there. And then we'll put some adhesive here and here. And we'll stick him here. There we go. And then this one here. Okay. Now let's do our card base. So this is just our plain old thick basic white. And then I cut this. This is the artfully... Oh no, I'm gonna mess it up. Artfully something paper. And I really liked just the words on the front. You can't read it. I mean, you probably could if you got a magnifying glass, but you can't really read it. So I thought it would be great just to kind of add a little bit of detail to the back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and stamp this large tree that comes in the stamp set. And we're gonna take, ink it up, and I need my, one thing I've noticed with the flower, with the tree is that I don't get necessarily a solid image. So I'm gonna put my piercing mat underneath it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp off and then I'm gonna stamp just the top part in each kind of corner and then along the side if I need it. So like right here, that's kind of blank. So I'm just gonna ink it up and then just stamp a little bit there, kind of like that. Give it just a little bit more so that it's all the way around those edges. All right, and then there and then one more oops I got that off the thing okay and then one right here okay so there we go we'll have to clean that in just a second because we're going to use that stamp again all right so now let's take our liquid glue and we're going to adhere that to our card front. My craziness with the glue. All right. Just make sure the letters are in the right direction. And then it's just going to cover the whole front of the card. Okay. All right. Then we're going to take and we're gonna take the Baker's Twine Essential Pack, and I have all one color in here. I can't remember if this is crumb cake or if it's soft suede. I think it's crumb cake. But anyway, I've kind of color coordinated mine because I have a lot of them that are open for classes. So I try to make it easier on myself. All right, then we're gonna take and tie a bow. All right. Get that to lay down there all right I might have put a little too much glue on that okay and then we're just gonna tie a bow but I don't need that much and we're just gonna tie it right here in the center and I'm gonna see if I can actually tie it I was struggling with my sample card I don't know why sometimes this uh, bigger twine and I don't do too well Yep, 
See, not gonna do it. <laughs> I might have to get my glue dot. Yep. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a glue dot. I'm gonna ball it up, so I'm gonna roll it into a little ball that's really tiny, and then I'm gonna stick it right there where I want to tie the bow. And that's gonna become my anchor to adhere it to that card front. Okay, and now we're gonna tie the bow. And, ta-da! There we go. <laughs> Look at there. All right, and then I'm gonna actually remove that glue dot because I don't want it there and to stick to anything that lays on top of it. All right, then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut off the ends right there. And then we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna put dimensionals on it. And because it's watercolor paper, I am going to add a few more than normal. I know I put a lot on there already, but we're gonna add just a few more. Just because it was that watercolor paper and it's kind of, you know, messed up. Like it gets wonky. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Then we'll take all these off. And there we go. Three more. Two more. Nope, three more. Okay. And then we're going to place this right on top in the center. And there is card number one. I do think this turned out cute. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked the colors. I thought the colors with the hedgehogs went great. But let me know what you think. And this was artfully composed. Thank you, Deb. The paper is artfully composed. Let me know what you think about it. This was one of the pictures I saw. But in the center, they had like a big watercolor painted red heart. But when I did red, it really didn't look good. So I changed it up to go with um, the coordinating paper. So, all right, so there is one. All right, and I'm gonna move my mess out of the way. As y'all know, I like box myself in. Okay, I'm gonna move this because I need to clean it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my stamp here. And this is a big one, so I'm just gonna rub on it like this first and get all the big stuff off and then clean it this way. Okay. Because we're actually gonna use it on this card. Okay, this card, I actually will say is my favorite. And this uses embossing. So this is embossing powder. And I kind of stepped again outside of the box a little bit and also am using the sweet strawberry with the flowers here. Because these flowers are very similar to the flowers in the tree, okay? So, and I did use the actual sentiment from the Hed Happy Hedgehog stamp set on that one. Okay, so on this one, I am going to need all the stuff out in the bucket here. I went ahead, I put everything in a little thing because I had two flowers left over, so y'all don't have to watch me as long. <laughs> all right. And of course, this one uses my linen thread, which y'all know I'm obsessed with. The Sweet Strawberry also has a bundle. It has a punch that comes with it, and that punches out the flower. I could, I originally stamped the large one, but we don't have a punch that punches that out, so I just decided to go with the small one. Okay. This is gonna be for our inside, so we're gonna stamp it at the same time we're stamping our other flowers as well. 
Okay. So let's do Knight of Navy. We're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment too. There we go. All right, so that one's done. We can set that aside. And then let's stamp. We're going to stamp our blue. Let me make sure I'm in the, I was not in the camera. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we're going to do two blue, Knight of Navy. And then we're going to do two in here as well. Okay. And then to fill it in, you you don't even have to stamp off. Well, you can stamp off, which is actually what I did, but you don't have to. But I wanted mine to be pretty light on the inside. So we're going to stamp off first and then stamp inside. Okay. And then one more. All right, so that's blue. So now we have to clean it so we can use Calypso Coral. All right, and then we're gonna do there and there. So that's gonna be for the inside of our card. And then there and there. And then ink up, stamp off, and stamp in. Oh no, it did not clean that very well apparently. Hold on a second. I got blue in my ink pad, so it must be on the edge. Okay. Um, if you ever do that, let me show you. So if you look at the pad, there is now blue here. So you can take a spoon and kind of scrape it up and then just re-ink it with your re-inker and it will get that color out. I have, I have done that several times. <laughs> and it happens in class too. So that's just a, a um, helpful tip right there. And another thing is when you're stamping on grid paper like this, don't actually stamp over the color that you've previously had because you will pick it up and you could put it in your ink pad as well. So I have learned the hard way on that one too. All right, now we just need to stamp our butterfly. And we're gonna stamp our butterfly on that blue. And then we're gonna stamp it right there as well. Okay, now I need to color in my butterfly. And I'm just taking the light Calypso Coral and just coloring it all in so it's all one color. I didn't do anything fancy with it. You could do a blue one if you wanted to as well, a Knight of Navy one, which I think would be pretty. And if you wanted to, you could um, mix up the colors and do like Knight of Navy and Clips or Coral together. But when you stamp it, um, I originally stamped this in Memento so that I can make it different colors. But the Memento really, it was a lot of black on there and I just didn't like that for a butterfly. So, all right. This is gonna go on our inside. So we're gonna set that aside for just a moment. Now we're gonna take and punch out our flowers. And we're gonna start over here. And let's see if I can line it up. I think I'm there. Which is gonna cut my butterfly. So let's go ahead and fussy cut the butterfly then. And yes, you have to fussy cut the butterfly. Actually, we're just gonna cut that off really quick. All right, well, let's start that again here. All right. I think I kind of stamped it. I stamped it upside down. <laughs> so, and it does kind of fit at almost every angle, but not all. All right, and then that one I think is like that. 
Let's come back down here. There we go. I should have thought about that before I stamped it on the paper, right? All right, next one. Goes there. And then one more. All right. We're gonna rip off this bottom piece here. And line it up like that and punch there we go all right so that takes care of the punch and then we just want to make sure we pull out all of those and one more all right and then we can throw all this away I have lots of trash cans all around me for a reason <laughs> all right so let's let's see cut out our butterfly I'm not gonna be real picky about the um, antennas here we're just gonna cut around it so there's gonna be a little bit extra white space but that's quite all right you don't really see it once it's on the tree over there and it is little but I promise it's not too bad to cut out But I am going to concentrate because I might cut off a wing. Uh, all right. I get nervous whenever I go and do Facebook Lives, especially when I'm fussy cutting. All right, there we go. All right, good. There we go. And we'll throw this away so it's out the way. Put this back up. And now let's stamp our tree. So we are going to stamp in Whisper White. And the reason I wanted to do Whisper White is I want it to be, I want it to be stronger. Like I want the white to be really white. So that is why we went with that. All right, I'm going to make sure I've got all the ink off of this. And now we're just going to ink it up. Also a suggestion when you go to clean off your Whisper White, our old cleaning tools, which is this right here. It's our Stampin' Scrub. This is actually the best way to clean off your white ink. Um, doing it with the chamois doesn't really work very well, just so you know. So bring out the old school. <laughs> All right, so we've got that inked up pretty good. I'm gonna grab in my Stampin' Pierce Mat again, and then I'm gonna stamp this down at the bottom. And I'm gonna kind of hold it there for just a second because I wanna make sure that that white really does transfer really well onto that balmy blue. All right, then I'm gonna pick it up and I'm going to take our white embossing powder and I'm going to just pour it right over top. And I'm going to shake it off. All right. I'm going to move this out the way so I don't dump it everywhere. And then close up my Whisper White ink pad. And we're going to pull back in that heat tool and we're going to heat this up. Alright. And 
again, I did that back to kind of help level out that piece again. Okay, so now that that is done, we're gonna take our card base, we're gonna fold it in half, our Knight of Navy. Again, if you're just joining us, I saw a couple extra people join in. All of the measurements and the products you used are in the description of this video if you click on the blog post. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's ugly. <laughs> nice and dirty. Okay, so we're going to take a piece of the vellum and this um, this has writing on it so I want to make sure again that I have it in the right direction. I'm going to take and just do two straight lines down like this and then I do kind of one in the center. And this is going to be at an angle to the left like that and I just made like a little H there. We're gonna flip this over. We're gonna add some dimensionals to it. And again, we're gonna add a little extra because we wanna make sure that with the warping that it stays nice and flat. I gotta move that one over. It's hanging off the side. There we go. Right there, there. Yeah, I'm just gonna add them. <laughs> Dimensionals are not that expensive right now. All right, and then take all these backings off. And then we're going to adhere this at an angle slightly toward the right. And I just wanna make sure that I do cover up all of the adhesive lines. Okay, and then press it down. Now we're gonna take our sentiment and we're gonna kinda of lay it wherever we want. It's gonna go from one end to the other of our card base. And we're gonna put it right about there. So I do know that I need to put a dimensional on each end. And then we're just gonna put adhesive down the center. So it'll catch over the balmy blue. Okay. All right, and then we will lay this and we're gonna put it straight because obviously you want the sentiment to be straight. So I think that is good. Okay, now let's take a mini dimensional and let's pop up our, let's see if I can find a mini. We're gonna pop up our butterfly and we're gonna put our butterfly right here on this top flower, kind of like it's landing there. Then we're gonna take our little flowers here we're gonna grab some um, some uh, mini glue dots and we're gonna put, actually we're gonna take a mini glue dot here. We're gonna put this one right here. Okay, and then we're gonna take and put this one right about here this one right here. Make sure I'm not covering up the sentiment. Okay, and then we're gonna pop this one up. Right there. And then these two will get a glue dot. And we will put that one there, that one there. And then let's take a piece of linen thread. Yes, Verna. Um, Aunt, Amy, uh, Aunt Amy, I like that. Oh, do you, Morgan? Hello, Morgan. For y'all that don't know, Morgan is my niece. And she hurt her ankle this past weekend. Poor little thing. 
I hope she's actually feeling better today because I forgot to check on her today. Um, but I know yesterday she was still struggling with walking. So, and yes, Melissa, it does. It looks cleaner when you do the, um, when you do the whisper white. So, and that is not my idea. I saw another demonstrator do it and I fell in love with it. And that is how I took it. <laughs> so now on any of the darker card cardstock like this, um, or colored cardstock, then yes, I do. All right, so we got that. Now we're gonna take another glue dot. And we're gonna put that right there in between those flowers. And then we just need to add our inside. I'm getting all kinds of piles over here again. <laughs> And we're gonna just add our adhesive to our card back. And then we're gonna stick it on the inside. And I made it crooked. We can fix that. There we go. I let go of it a little too quickly. There we go. Okay, so there is card number two. Again, this one was my favorite. I absolutely loved the colors of this one. And I think the vellum paper added an extra little pop with it. So, all right, so that's those two. And now, hold on two seconds. I have to move trays <laughs> because I used so many, project, uh, so many products with these projects today that I had to, um, I had to do two trays. So this is gonna be our last card. And I'm gonna be honest, I really like this one too. So this would be my second favorite. <laughs> um, and we are using, I tried to use every aspect of the stamp set. So when you look at the hedgehog stamp set, you've got the hedgehogs, which are obviously what the stamp set's named after, but you have all these other amazing stamps in there as well. So I really wanted to focus on all of them. All right, so here we go. And I've done most of the die cutting again. Let's try to make it a little quicker. And we may go ahead and stamp first our sentiment. We've got lots of blends that we're gonna use. And our sentiment is gonna actually come from the Hello Beautiful, which is one of my favorite stamp sets in the mini catalog. And we're gonna use the thank you, because we never have enough thank you cards, right? All right, and then we're just gonna stamp it right there. Ta-da! All right. Oh, well, I still need that, but. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. I'm gonna take my mini cutter here. I'm just gonna trim off the sides. And then I can use the rest of this on more projects. All right, so there's our sentiment. We'll set it aside. And then, okay, let me pull all this out. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take, I'm gonna leave all that right there. I'm gonna pull in my piece again here. And I want to do some flicking onto my uh, brick background. And this right here, I used the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black Stampin' Write marker and I'm going to just flick it right out of the lid, like that. Okay, and then we'll set that aside for just a moment. And actually, we're just gonna leave this in because I gotta do some coloring, don't I? All right, but we're gonna flip it over so it looks prettier. All right, let's stamp our mushroom first. 
And Kathy Goldie, this mushroom is for you. I thought of you as I made this card. All right. So I'm not going to stamp it all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to add in a little bit more grass. But I'm going to stamp it right about there. I don't know why I was hesitating on it, but I was. I guess because I want it to be perfect, right? <laughs> and then we're going to stamp the bird right on top of the mushroom. Great thing is, it's photopolymer, so you can see. So I'm sorry if I get my head in the way. I'm going to move it down just slightly. Just make sure I get that on there. Ooh, perfect. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to add in a little bit more grass down here at the bottom. I'm going to turn that because my stamp is on there sideways. Okay. And I think that will be it. Now we're going to take the gray granite. And this is a gray granite background, by the way, which I don't use gray granite very often, but I thought it looked really good with the... Um, with the brick and mortar. So, all right, and then I'm gonna take my gray granite and I'm just gonna color in the bottom of the mushroom here. Okay. And then we're gonna take granny apple green and we're just gonna do some flicking. I'm really, I'm not following the lines and I'm not like necessarily coloring in in. I'm just kind of flicking, doing almost like br brush strokes um, for the grass. Because I don't want it to look, you know, all just one big blob of green. Okay, now let's color our mushroom. We're going to do the light underneath. And it's Poppy Parade because for some reason my red Stampin' Blends are missing. I ordered some new ones. And I don't, I don't know what I did with them. I laid them somewhere and I don't know what I did. <laughs> I don't know where I laid them because my craft room is clean. All right, I added some more gray granite right there. So, all right, and then we're gonna take the dark and we're gonna do the top. And I'm not doing any shading at all. I don't think it necessarily needs it, so Feel free, if you would like to, to go at it. Okay, so there we go. Now for our bird, I'm going to, I am going to do just a slight shading of this. I'm going to go just kind of around where these marks are and the wings and feathers here. Then I'm going to take the dark and I'm going to color in the entire bottom. Okay, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to take the light and color in the rest. All right, now I'm going to take the Daffodil Delight. We're going to color this flower. Then I wanted... I want a muted yellow, but I didn't want the crushed curry. No, we don't have a crushed curry. I wanted it to look more like a crushed curry. So almost like a muted yellow. So the blue, I originally had colored it all blue. I didn't like it. I wanted to do a yellow belly. And I was going to start over, but I started with just going over the blue belly with my yellow and it gave me the exact color I wanted. So I stayed with it. So sometimes it's good to experiment. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color that little leaf there with the granny apple green. And it's literally like just a dot. You can't even see that you colored it. Okay, now we're gonna take our card base. We're gonna fold it in half. And give it a good burnish. Now, I'm going to take a piece of, this is the flower, 
flowering something, it's in the description of the video. Like when you hit on the blog post link, it's all in there. Um, I'm bad with names when I go live. So on the sample, I did it so that it ended with this piece here. On this sample, I, or on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it from top to bottom. I think it'll look good. Um, this is actually a layout that I've done several times before, and I've done it where it goes the whole length, and I like it, so I decided to go back to that. So, we're gonna do it, and if I don't like it, you know, it's okay. <laughs> It will just stay that way. All right, so we've got that at the top. Now we're gonna run this down the edge like that, and ta-da. Now I'm gonna take and pop this, um, turn it over, and I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals, with the big dimensionals. And I'm just gonna do my normal on it. Don't need to add any extra. Um, as a matter of fact, one of my swaps was, um, and actually one of the cards last week had a very similar um, layout to it, but this piece was over here instead. I use it all the time. All right, and then we're just gonna lay this right about there. Okay, perfect. Now I have the square vellum doilies, which is in our annual catalog. And we're gonna pull out a full one. And I'm gonna go through and take out the pieces. Ooh. Oops, I pulled a little hard on that one. Let's take another one. I can use that for a different project. I'm gonna to try to pull out these little pieces that are stuck in, because I wanna make sure that it has all the designs. And some of them didn't pop out when it went through the machine and when they put them in the package. All right, I think that was it. Okay, so now we're gonna put this on here. So I'm gonna take some adhesive and just lay it across. And I'm gonna actually put it so that it's not like completely straight like that. But then I also don't want it like a diamond. So I'm just gonna kind of off center it just a little bit. And then just make sure it stays down there. Then we're gonna take our bird piece and I can move all this now. And we're gonna pop it up. And then we're gonna stick it right here. Like that. And then we're gonna take some linen, or not linen thread, but this is that Baker's Twine Essential Pack that I showed you earlier that had all the one color. Well, here's the very vanilla, and then here is the gray granite. And then I have one that has the white and the black in it as well. All right, so I'm gonna tie a bow. And let's see if I can actually make this work. My bow skills apparently are starting to fail. <laughs> All right, I want those to be the same length. There we go. All right, then I'm gonna trim off the ends. I'm gonna take a glue dot and and I don't have to worry about folding it over or anything like that. We're gonna stick it right here And then we're gonna pull over, or we're gonna take our sentiment and it's gonna go over it, okay? Actually, I could probably move that up a little bit more. Let's do that. There we go. All right. So here is our sentiment. 
and we're gonna put a dimensional on the left side and then adhesive on the right because the right's gonna sit onto our already popped up piece. So it's gonna go just like this. All right, now the last thing we wanna do is put it on the inside. I didn't stamp anything on this one, but I'm just gonna stamp the mushroom in just the black memento and I'm not gonna add anything else to it. I'm not gonna color it or anything like that. And look what I just did. <laughs> this is my new memento pad. It is, I'm having the hardest time getting the lid off. I'm gonna actually add this in here too since I'm there. All right. Now, let's add this to our inside. Make sure I'm not getting it everywhere. Oops. Okay. Put this on the inside. And ta-da, there is our last card. All right. I hope you enjoyed these projects. I, again, there is a blog post where you can have closer pictures. I will have one more project later this week. It'll probably be Thursday when it comes out. Um, and it'll be a little 3D box to hold, um, to hold a large, um, Budge round. That's what it is. <laughs> so I will have that posted later this week. Let me bring in all the cards. And here they are. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. And thank you, Kathy. Yes, Kathy. The mushroom and the bird. I thought of you as I was stamping. So that card is for you. <laughs> um, one of my reds is coming apart. Is it really? That's why I got rid of my last one. I didn't even notice that. Hold on, I'm looking. Huh. Let's see, let's see. Oh, you know what? It might have been until I pushed it back on. Yeah, I think it's okay now. Apparently, I put it back on really tight. <laughs> All right. The flicking adds so much to the brick. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It flicking adds anything anything great like this one you could have done a little bit of like a blue in the background and it would have been fine too right I'm all about the flicking all right guys I hope you have a great rest of your week if you have any questions let me know and um don't forget about the next club using the flowering ring boots set so all right, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you later. Bye.